Welcome back to Open Topics, episode number seven. This is a redo of a vid of the same video that I just did before, which apparently had no audio. I didn't realize though my I just didn't realize until just now my mic wasn't turned on. So everything I said in the last video, so I have to basically redo this whole video. I'm not happy with this at all. Okay. So, with this particular thing, I'm talking about two things. First, the Return of Fantastic Four. Second, the stuff on the New Justice banner. Yep. First up, let's talk about Return of the Fantastic Four. For first time in three years since James Robertson ended the series back in 2015. At issue number 645. And I am so happy this series is coming back. A lot of people have really wanted this series to come back for three years. Excuse me, though, I have heard the reason why, according to Jonathan Hickman, one of the previous writers for the book, as a matter of fact, I think he was the second to last, he was the third to last writer of Fantastic Four before the book ended in 2015. He says the reason the book was ended was because of the 2015 Fantastic Four film. That is the reason why. Though I have heard the unofficial, the, one of the reasons why is that Excuse me. Over the past few years, uh, the last few years of his run, apparently it wasn't selling too well. Okay, I don't get how, especially since the book has been always been very good, no matter who's been writing it. I've never, like, as someone who has read every single issue of Fantastic Four, I don't know how in the world the book was not selling too well. Yeah. I mean, when the 2005 2007 film came out, it didn't affect the book at all. I mean, as far as I know, yeah, they're kind of bad, but they're not as bad as the 2015 film, which. And this something that's really weird. Apparently, my brother and sister in law like the 2015 film, despite the fact of how basically a piece of garbage it is. Have I seen it? Nope. I've never seen it. I just haven't had a chance to see it yet. So there's that. The creative team of the book is Dan Sly and Sampicelli. Great choice for creative team. Sarah Pacelli, whose last known book she ever did recently was doing the Spider-Man book, which she's basically done the artwork on and off since the done the artwork for Miles Morales Spider-Man since his creation back in 2011. So, nice choice. I, I like her artwork. Dan Slott. This is by far the third group book he's ever done. The first book he did was the first Great Lake Avengers series. Now, there was the ongoing series that briefly lasted from 2005 to 2016, 2015, 2016. That was completely unrelated to this, this that was completely unrelated to this original one. And that was a four-issue miniseries, which the last series has done a review of as part of his one of flashback miniseries, this flashback views. Great miniseries. I do recommend it. He was also the second writer of Mighty Avengers, the run that started the, the series started back in 2007 and ended in 2010. He was the second and last writer of that particular run. No, he did not do the run that lasted from 2013 to I think it was 2015. Yeah, the book that lasted for two years. Even the book was relaunched after 14 issues as Captain America and the Mighty Avengers for issue one. He, he took over the book in 2009 after the events of Secret Invasion. He did the book from that point forward up until its ending in 2010. Also the first time he ever wrote Iron Man. Yep. So there's that. So, great lineup. Great choice. A lot of fact book is, is, is coming back. And according to our code read, according to Jeff Radeski, Maritone is not going away. As far as I can tell, it's going, going back to be a Think Team book, which basically that's the book is known for me. A Think Team book. So yeah, there's that. Now, what about now? The other thing I'm talk about is, of course, the new Justice banner. Now there are three Justice League teams that are going to start up soon after the events of No Surrender. And these books will be Justice League, Justice League Dark, and Justice League Odyssey. Justice League is going to be done by Scott Snyder. Justice League Dark is going to be done by James Tynion IV, and Justice League Odyssey is going to be by Joshua Williamson. Simply put, when it comes to Justice League, the main book, it's the lineup of the Justice League Unlimited TV show with the addition of Aquaman, Cyborg, and... Yeah, I think it's just Aquaman and Cyborg. Yeah, with the exception of those two. This is the lineup fully. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash. This is the very own version. 
Aquaman, Hawk Girl, and Cy uh, Hawk, Hawk Girl, Cyborg, and the John Silver Green Lantern. Love this lineup, and it kind of also reminiscent of this is not oh, this is not the only time that this lineup has kind of also been seen. They also kind of use this lineup for the start of Grant Morrison's run for the JLA series back in 1997. So nice way. I mean, it was it's been 21 years since that book came out, so why not? It's not a bad idea to do. Um, as for most of the lineup itself, uh, for Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Aquaman, Cyborg, yeah, they're just basically characters that have been there since issue one. Hawk Girl, first time she's been in the book since, off the top of my head, since before Final Crisis. Yeah, her and Jon Stewart, it's been a long time since they've been on the Justice League team. And Jon Stewart, what the heck he's been doing since Final Crisis? He's mainly hung out in the Green Lantern Corps series for pretty much the the entirety of the second volume and the third volume. He was also in the two miniseries that came after that, which was excuse me, Green Lantern Lost Ar Army and Green Lantern Corps Oblivion. He's currently in the Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps series. Excuse me, which is a really damn good series. That Rob Venditti is ending his run the book with issue 50, but I haven't heard anything book is going to cancel yet. I hope the guy it doesn't. Um, I think it's great the fact that he's come back to the book. Great idea. Though, I do like the fact Jessica Cruz is sticking around on one of their slick teams. I'll get to them in a minute. Though Simon Boz is surprisingly off the roster for some reason. At least, I think he's still sticking around on the Green Lantern side, which as far as like not going anyplace. So, there's that. I like the fact Snyder's doing this. Because they kind of announced this a little early on that he's going to take over the book. Now, if I know about the book, when it's going to restart. It's going to restart after issue 46. Is what is basically going to be the last issue of this current volume. That only started just two years ago. And you're thinking, okay, you reset the book after two years. But at least they put out a lot more issues than, let's say, 20 or 30. They put out nearly 50, which is actually a pretty good amount. i got to praise DC for that. Though the book came out twice a month, so there's that. They're gonna, as far as I can tell, Snyder is going to keep the schedule the book has been having since 2016, where it's come out twice a month, so I'm happy with that. All right? Next is on to Justice League Dark, which is going to be done by Tini himself, and the book is going to have the lineup of... When I get to back to the thing, it's going to consist of Wonder Woman, Santana, Swamp Thing, Detective Chimp, Man Bat, and... Okay, apparently John Constantine is going back in the book, which is interesting. The fact that um, I had heard he was not competitive, now apparently he is, which is interesting. Man Bat is an interesting choice because he has never been featured outside of a Bat book before. Not that I think of it anyways. He has been featured in The Outsiders, but that's a Batman-related title. But as something not Batman related, this is interesting. And it's something though he's involved with super, something supernatural, even though he's a science based character. Uh, Zatanna, play of experience with Justice League Dark. John Constantine, basically the leader of the group since for a long time. Swamp Thing, last time he was involved with this group was during the Forever Evil Blight era, during the Forever Blight tie ins. Uh, that particular crossover, that was the last and official time he was part of the group. Wonder Woman. First time she's been involved with the group since Trinity War. Yep, she was part of the group part of Trinity War, so that's interesting. Detective Chimp, not the first supernatural group he's been part of. He was part of Shadow Pact. Look them up, they're an awesome group. They're basically kind of a supernatural group that got functioned as mercenaries. That's be like, uh, I think, because of some of the more known members of the supernatural based group. People like, uh, I don't think Dr. Fate was part of the group. I have heard he's going to involve with something soon. But, he, uh, books for people like the Enchantress, though this was her pre-Flashboy look, not the current look she has right now in Suicide Squad. The only reason why she's part of that group is because of the Suicide Squad film. Tekka Chimp was part of the group. Blue Devil. Boatload of people. It's an honest-to-God really good series. I kind of wish that, now, I kind of wish something like, something like Tekka Chimp would come back. For a while, and I'm so happy Just Like Dark did instead. Because Just Like Dark was a fantastic title, and I'm still 
puzzled on why in the world DC ended the book back in 2015. Yeah, do you know how many writers that series had in 40 issues? Uh, like Justice League, which had one writer for like 50, it were actually had three writers. You had jo jo yeah, Jeff Johns through the first 50 issues, 51 was done by Dan Abnett, and 52 was done by Dan Jurgens. Justice League Dark was done by Peter Mulligan, Jeff Lemire, Ray Fox, and Jan Lamadius, who took over the book with Blight, and he was pretty much the last writer for the last couple of years of the book, and the book was fantastic under his, under his era. And it had some of the more interesting members. I mean, if you want to, if you want to remember who was part of the group, aside from, well, John Constantine standing on Swamp Thing, here are the other members. Andrew Bennett from the Eye of Vampire title, uh, a new black orchid who apparently was from Argus, Dr. Mist, the Frankenstein monster was only part of the group, came on with the annual left in issue 30, Dead Man, Madame Xanadu, Mind Warp, who is a new character, Night Nurse, Lovely Woman, uh, too bad she hasn't seen since well the book ended. The Pandora character, the one who kind of started the, the whole continuity in the first place. Though she can't be part of the group now because she's dead. She got killed by Dr. Manhattan during the events of, well, DC Rebirth. The Phantom Stranger. Yeah, he was briefly part of the group. Uh, as far as I can tell, he has not been seen probably in quite a while. I would love to see him part of the group again. Let's see. Swamp Thing, obviously. She had the Changing Man. This was a the the revamped version that Peter Morgan introduced in the late 80s, early 90s. The seven inch comic, which I have still not read yet. I'm reading. I'm kind of reading the the Steve Dicko run. I kind of get that first, but Peter Morgan created this version of him. Timothy Hunter from Books Magic series. And Zarel. Okay. Yeah, that was the original lineup. Of course, new lineup is Tetic Chimp, John Constantine. Man Bat, Swamp Thing, Santa, and Wonder Woman. Swamp Thing has got a dreadlock look for some reason. The last I saw him was in that awesome one shot to him and that uh, Tom King. I don't remember who the artist I think it was Luis Garcia Lopez. Great book. I highly recommend I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pick it up when, 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 I got, when I go to Free Comic Day. But Tech the Chip, for some reason, has Frankenstein's sword. I hope they're going to explain that in the series. But this is by far a great team, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Just like Odyssey, consisted of Cyborg, Starfire, the Jessica Cruz Green Lantern, Azrael, and Darkseid. Though I have heard this is the baby Darkseid who showed up during Darkseid War, so that should be interesting. And their headquarters is one of Brainiac's ships, okay? Which apparently has flames on its side. I think that Just Like No Surrender might explain how in the world this team, these teams were formed, so there's that. And as far as I can tell, that's it for Just Like. Oh, yeah, they're also going to be headquartered out of, believe it or not, the Hall of Justice. Mm hmm. And the, there's, in the two Titans books, Titans, I have heard, it's going to relaunch number one, which is weird, even though Dan Abbott is staying in the book as the writer. Okay, so at least Lewis Lovehog will be happy with the fact the book is not going away. Though, this is something really weird. With the exception of Nightwing, all the rest of the land for the series is being dropped for some reason. I don't know why. Who knows what's going to happen to these characters. And the group is going to replace with Raven, Beast Boy, Miss Martian, and the John Henry Iron Steel. Interesting choice. Uh, as for Teen Titans, Adam Glass is taking over the book with issue 20. Yeah. And, well, the Titans, Teen Titans group, which uh, Adam Glass is taking over the book with, with issue 20, like I said, I'm only familiar with him thanks to Suicide Squad, so... I can't exactly give an opinion on exactly how he's going to do this series, though he at least have experience running a group of characters. Now, from the DC Rebirth lineup, Damian Wayne Robin and the Kid Flash, the the black one, they're sticking around. That's great. I love the fact these two are sticking around. But the new lineup is also going to have some new characters, but a lot of these new characters are going to be two, two characters who have never been part of the Teen Titans before. 
one of whom is an original character, which I'm looking forward to see what she looks like because I've not seen much material for her at all. And that's the daughter of Lobo. Yeah, Lobo's daughter. That should be interesting. Plus also, Emigo Queen, the, the half-sister of Oliver Queen, who is 16 and she's older than Damien and she's even taller than he is. And... Though, so, get this, her parents are Shadow and Robert Queen. Yeah, even though that Shadow slept with Oliver Queen pre-Flashpoint. So, I wonder if Wally would actually bring up the fact that, well, as far as I can tell, Wally has not run into Oliver Queen yet for some reason. Yeah, he's had very little interaction with people outside of, let's say, the Titans group. I mean, he's interacted with the Justice League group and Titans, and of course Teen Titans and Deathstroke, that's really it. Excuse me. Now, from what I can tell, for the Titans group, it's going to be a AAA farm team for the Justice League, which the way it's described, the way I've heard it, is that they're going to use the basis for the Young Justice cartoon show as basis for Titans. Interesting, but some people thought, why didn't they call it simply Young Justice? But I think they call it Reason Titans because people love what Dan Abbott is doing with the book, so. There's that. Though I do agree with the fact that disbanding the t main Titans team is a stupid idea to do. But I like the fact that Miss Martian is coming back. As far as I can tell, this is her first post flash appearance. Steel has mainly popped up in the pages of action, ma mainly in Superman related titles. So this be the first time he's appeared in a non Superman book in years. I think the last known official time he's popped up in a non-Superman related title. Uh, actually, no. The last official time was during the second to last arc. Second to last set of issues for just like United of the Book of Axed as issue 16. Now, as for the other characters, well, I'm hoping some of these new characters, some people like, it could be the Blue Beta, which I hope he joins the group. Uh, Static Shock. Though he might go back up, I've heard something he might go back up to the to the Dakota to the Monster Universe. But I like to see who these new characters start soon. I hope now, as far let's say for now the Rebirth lineup, as far as I can now the only characters who are not part of the, these lineups is pretty much the entirety of Just Like America. Well, Black Canary is probably obviously going to stick in the Green Arrow title, but and of course Batman obviously is doing whatever, but. These falling people are not part of anything. Uh, just like America, with the exception of Batman, Black, and Eric, because those two are often whatever. Almost the entirety of Dan Abbott's Titans uh, lineup, with the exception of Nightwing. And Aqualad. Yeah, these characters, it's kind of like, what's going to happen to these characters? Yeah, i like to see them do something. I wouldn't mind if Aqualad joined the, the main Titans book, the, the Titans book Dan Abbott's doing. That would be interesting. But, uh, who knows? Who knows, indeed, when it comes to that particular group. Alright, so, that's really it for this particular one. Um, my mic is on this time, so I made sure for uh, that. Though this is about 10 minutes shorter than my other video, but I'm getting my point across. I'm looking forward to these books, and for Just League books, I'm probably going to purchase, like, when, when I get a chance to. I probably am going to be subscribing to all three Just League books, because... I like the premise of all these three books. Titans, I was already planning to do anyways, and Teen Titans, yeah, I'm planning to get that in the future, but I need to get the trade soon. Though I do have the last of Contra crossover on order right now from Amazon, which is not going to be here until Wednesday. Yeah, I had to say it. I don't know why it's taking so long to come in. But uh, in Toys see my next video, which probably be tomorrow, which will be probably my, my review of the new Hunter x Hunter chapter, which is the last one for, for a while because the series just went hiatus. Tokyo Re, I'm not so sure when the next review for that one is going to be. Full Metal Alchemist, I thought I was going to do it today, but it probably won't be too late this week at this point. Okay, I'm hoping to get it done this week. Okay, but until I see the next video, bye.